Hey vlogging babes, Bree here. I wanted to film a quick tutorial to show you guys one of my new favorite tools, Key Search. It was just introduced to me this year and I have been loving it because it is truly so easy to use and makes keyword research and SEO a breeze. So it even says it here on their site, keyword research made easy, and it really, really does. So I wanted to film a quick little tutorial to show you guys why I love it so much and to show you how to just quickly and easily get started. So let's log in and do that. So when you first log in, you're going to be taken to this keyword research page and it's going to end up automatically pulling up the last thing you were searching for. So I wanted to ask a couple of our gals inside our coaching program what they were searching for so I could use those as some examples for you guys. And so what you do here is just very quickly and easy is you will put in the keywords that you're thinking about writing your blog post about here in this search bar and then hit search. And then it is going to pull up all this information. Now this can look very overwhelming very quickly. And I'm going to tell you very quickly just how to make it uh, not so stressful. <laughs> So the thing that's very interesting to look at here is the search trends over the months, which just kind of helps whenever you're planning your content and kind of looking at how early do I want to have my content out there so that way it gets picked up. So for Cricut, you can tell it kind of starts to ramp up over the holidays and stays a little active at the beginning of the year. And so you want your blog post to be out about three months before, you know, we hit this spike in October, right? So that kind of is helpful with just like planning your content along with doing your keyword research. Now, what we're going to look at is we're going to go over to this right hand side. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit score. And we're going to sort this so that way the green numbers are up at the top. So how we do our research is we want to look for things that have a green score, which means a low score. So you should be able to rank for it. And we want to look at ones that have a little bit of a higher volume. So I like to look at ones that have around a thousand um, searches. That way I know that I'm not only going to, you know, potentially rank for it. There's a keyword that I can rank for when I utilize them properly in my blog. Um, but that I'm also going to get, um, more eyes on it because of the higher the volume. So for example, I would rather spend my time working on, let's say this post down here, making stickers with Cricut because it has about 2,400 searches per 30 days. And it has a ranking that not score that I could rank for instead of doing something like Cricut expression versus Cricut explore, because that only has 40 searches per 30 days. So I want to do something that's got a little bit more volume. So what I like to do is I like to, so sort it by score and then comb through here and pick out the ones that sound like, Oh, that would be interesting to me. So what I do is I just go through and I will put a little check mark next to those ones. So let's say, okay, best cricket for making shirts. Yeah, I could write a blog post about that and include it in separate blog posts. So that way I become more of an expert in that topic. Cricket joy stickers. So you can see like from this one down here, oh, stickers are kind of popular, right? Um, let's keep skimming. Cricket embossing. Maybe that's something you want to talk about. Um, a best Cricut machine for beginners. That would be really fun and easy to do, right? Since you know so much about Cricut. Um, best vinyl for Cricut. That's a good one. Breast Cricut for beginners again. So like it looks like, you know, best Cricut for beginners, best Cricut machine for beginners. Like that combined has a high, a pretty good search volume and a low ranking in terms of difficulty. So that's definitely a post that needs to be written and keyworded really well. Um, let's see. Cricut book. I also know that one of the girls I'm doing this Cricut search for, she's got some Cricut books so that, Hey, you need to keep plugging the words Cricut book in your products. And again, Cricut stickers. So Cricut stickers are very popular. Um, but obviously there's not a ton of, um, competition there. So that's really good. So that's what you'll want to do first is you'll want to kind of go through and Cricut has a ton. Um, I'm going to do some more keywords that aren't going to have this many green lights, but so what you want to do next is 
you want to always have a spreadsheet going with your keyword terms. This is just going to help you in the long run with planning content. This is how I will batch my SEO research, right? So instead of just doing the research for one blog post at a time, the best thing you can do is keep a spreadsheet going of all of the ideas and things that you can rank for. So you'll want to start a spreadsheet with the keywords that you can rank for and put some of this information like the volume and the score. So that way you're just reminded of it. Then whenever you're ready to go and write your blog post or plan out your content calendar for the month, instead of having to do this, all you have to do is go to your spreadsheet and comb through there and look at what is inspiring you and pick from that list. That way, when you have a whole bunch of ideas there and you know that you can rank for them, it's so much more fun to be able to pick from that list, right? Rather than being like, okay, I kind of want to write about this. Let me go to the research. Let me go do this, right? You've already done that work. So make research fun. I think key search makes it really fun. Um, you know, treat yourself to a nice little coffee, light a little candle, maybe go to a coffee shop um, and hang out for a couple of hours and do some fun digging. And this is one area where you get to go down all the rabbit holes. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second, because I'm going to do some more um, keywords that we're going to have to probably do a little bit more digging for. But you're going to be able to go down some rabbit holes um, and just explore and be like, okay, maybe let's try this keyword and see how this works. So let's do a couple of other examples. So let's see, I have, um, so somebody wanted to find more posts. She does kids and mom life type of posts. Now those are very, very broad topics, right? And so what if we just start with something like kids and um, back to school? Let's see what that kind of pulls up. So we'll hit search and we'll wait for it to load. Awesome. Now, once it loads, this is very interesting, right? Look at these little spikes when kids are going back to school. Okay. So we'll want to go again, go over here to the right and let's search by score. So let's sort them by that. So here we get to kind of, this is where if you're like, I'm not even hundred percent sure what I want to blog about. This is where you can start to do some little, a little bit of digging and a little bit of research. Um, so back to is pulling up a lot of different things. So if we try to skim real quickly by volume, now we can see like, okay, that obviously this search did not work so well, but maybe it's going to give us a couple of ideas. Um, so back to school messages for kids. Okay. Maybe we want to like do something in the, um, lunch area. So what about kids school lunches? Let's just do kids school lunch and see what that pulls up. Okay. So again, you can kind of see like that one spikes a bit more in the fall, but it also kind of stays, you know, trendy throughout the year, which is cool. So again, let's sort it by score. And let's see what we can find here. So this is what I mean by kind of digging through a rabbit hole of ideas, right? So if we're scanning here, okay, the first one and kind of the only one that pops up to me that might be worth it is kids lunchbox ideas. So that's got a great search volume of 4,400 and still it's a bit at the top of the difficulty range, but it's still technically in the green. I would like to see it a bit lower than that but that is one idea of something that you could do. So you'll, this is just an example of like how you need to kind of dig a little bit and do a little bit more research. This is also like hopefully very eye opening for anybody that is newer to this of like, okay, I really can't just kind of post whatever ideas I think people are searching for and expect to rank for it or expect for the competition to be low and for me to get paid to get for it. You have to be very, very strategic with it because you're going up against other um, URLs, other um, websites here that have um, higher authority than you and that are ranking really well for it. So you can kind of see that over here. So we want to be really strategic with what we're doing. And you can even click. So whenever I click this, you can click into this and see um, a little bit more information here um, just about that specific one, kids lunchbox ideas. 
um, verify the trends, see kind of some other websites that are talking about it. And then here, it'll give you some other keyword suggestions. So um, let's kind of plug in this one. Do we want to search this keyword? Yeah, let's do it. So let's see what that one pulls up. So that will kind of help your um, <laughs> rabbit hole digging as you're going. So obviously that one is not the best because it still has um, a search a little bit more difficult than we want. But let's see if it pulls up any more skimming, skimming, skimming. No, it still seems like that one is kind of the best. So that's just an example of how you'll want to dig through and go through a couple of rabbit holes to find the keywords that you want. All right, let's do one more example. So somebody else inside of our coaching program shift said um, she's doing a post on why they chose rigid core flooring for their home and their DIY process to install it. Okay, I have no idea what that is. So let's just type in and see what comes up with rigid core flooring and give that a search. Okay, so it looks like that alone has um, a pretty good volume. It's in the green. It's still a little bit higher than I want, um, but it's not bad. It looks like there needs to be just some more um, blog posts out there about that. So then what you could do is, you know, if it is, let's see, sometimes these ones are a little bit older, so you need to like check it. So let's just see what it does with luxury vinyl flooring. Okay, so like throwing in the word um, luxury vinyl helps a bit too. That's another keyword you can start use. Um, rigid core vinyl flooring. Let's see what that one does. So yeah, all of these are getting a pretty good score, which is really great. So let's just search it by score and see what happens. Um, let's see, I'm looking for, so there's that rigid core vinyl flooring again, rigid core flooring, luxury flooring. So really, it's a really good search term is what this is showing me. And that you could probably actually do several blog posts on it. So you could do one that answers some questions of like why you did it and why you decided to go with it and all of that. And then you could do another one on your DIY process to install it. And you could link them back and forth to each other, which is only going to help you look like more of an authority on rigid core flooring. So I would do two blog posts on it one on why you chose it and answering some frequently asked questions. Um, and then doing another one on the DIY, the DIY aspect of it. And so to find like those FAQs, um, what you can do is you can go over to answer the public, which is another tool. It gives you a bunch of searches for free um, per day. And so I just typed in rigid core flooring. And so what you can do here is you can see the questions that people ask about it. This is what you can also include in your blog post. So these could be like H2 or H3 in your blog post and then answer the questions. So um, how to install rigid core flooring, right? You can sit, do a little paragraph about that, answering that question and linking to your other that other blog post. Um, does it need underlayment? You can answer that question. Where is it made? Um, what is it? Is rigid core flooring good? What makes rigid core flooring? Like you would take these exact way that they word it and you would put those at your, as your H2 or H3 and then answer the questions there. So that's one way that you can grab questions about your keyword. Once you have figured out what the keyword you want to search, we want to rank for is over here. So that's just one aspect of keyword research, key search that um, there's obviously a bit more that we can dive into, but this truly is where I spend 99% of my time right now and why I love this tool because this helps so, so much. So you guys give it a try. I think it's really, really awesome and like so easy to use as you guys can see. And I will leave a link to key search in the description below and hashtag affiliate. You guys, thanks for supporting us so we can provide more tutorials like this for you guys. So be sure to click the link below and give this a try yourself and see what you think.